Deirdre, in trying to figure out how the brain works, sadly, we have a resource when brains go bad. And so we look at problems that occur and deficits that occur in human beings who have some sort of a brain defect, and then we can see what that part of the brain is supposed to do when it's working normal. In your area of research, in sleep and dreaming, what are some of the pathologies and what can we learn from them? Um, well, there's, there's one called behavior disorder of REM sleep, referring to rapid eye movement sleep, in which people act out their dreams. We're normally paralyzed during dreaming sleep. And when the inhibitory center gets damaged, um, all of a sudden, everybody's doing all of the movements <laughs> that they're trying to in their dreams. Uh, there actually were some experiments back in the 60s with cats lesioning those areas, and the cats would jump up and stalk imaginary mice and, mm -hmm. and so on. Um, Cats tend not to hurt themselves as much because they're low to the ground. So even <laughs> if they're moving around irrationally, bumping into things, it, it's not as bad a disorder for, for cats. For, for humans, when they begin to try to act out their dreams, they're, I mean, first of all, they're not aware of lying down. You tend to think that you're up, so you're making movements that aren't coordinated. You think you can fly. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> basically, you end up thrashing around in what you think are vertical uh -huh. stance horizontal and hitting your bed partner uh -huh. and falling out of the bed and smashing into the mirror in uh -huh. the room. And pe people are very active in most of their dreams. So when they start doing these physical movements, they, they very often either hit and injure other people who they're so, sometimes they're dreaming of an attack, but sometimes it's just a wall or something there uh -huh. that the other person uh -huh. ends up representing. So, so it's, it's a very dangerous. So disorder. from that, we, we know that there's a center in the brain that controls. That, the, yeah. That is completely paralyzed that that's why we see it, its name for the rapid eye movements because the eyes aren't paralyzed. And in a few people you see finger twitching during REM sleep, mm. but otherwise you're not moving. And, and this disorder makes it crystal clear why mm. that mechanism is right. in place. What are some other uh, 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 traumas or, or uh, deficits of uh, dreaming that we can look for? Narcolepsy is another disorder related to dreams. And in, in narcolepsy, people um, f have much more push toward REM sleep biochemically. So they fall asleep during the day and immediately into dreaming sleep. When they go to sleep at night, most people don't go into a dream period for 90 minutes, but narcoleptics almost immediately. But then more interestingly, you see some other phenomena from REM sleep intrude on awakening. Like when narcoleptics wake up, they often have sleep paralysis. They can't move for a little while, mm -hmm. which is totally, can't move anything but their eyes. Totally normal to dreaming yeah, sleep, sleep yeah. and very scary and disturbing yeah. and abnormal if you're awake. They also have what are called hypnagogic hallucinations often when they first wake up. S sometimes they can trace it to being something in a dream is still there in their bedroom when they're awake and otherwise seeing their real environment. And, and those two can, can often go together, the sleep paralysis so, and so there's hypnagogic something in your room and you can't hallucination. Move. <laughs> yeah, or you can have either one by, by mm -hmm. itself, mm -hmm. but commonly they both spill over into... How about the content of dreams uh, with narcolepsy when you immediately go into a REM sleep or during the day? Is, is the content any different? Um, it's, it's, it's just sort of more so. It's more vivid. It's more dramatic. They remember a lot more mm -hmm. longer. They're, they're having more. Rem time, but they they just look more bizarre, more emotional, more <laughs> visual, kind of all the things that dreams are, even more so. Mm, mm. Any other types of, of dream abnormalities, like uh, how about uh, schizophrenics and bipolar? I mean, psychiatric disorders. What what, what is the dream content of uh, of uh, people who have mental problems? Well, there have been studies on that, but actually. Um, they're very hard to do these days because everybody with schizophrenia, at least, and really severe depression, are on medications. So you don't and know And it which turns is out that well, it turns out that we do know that the psychiatric meds cause um, a lot of disruption of of the sleep cycle. Mm. A number of them suppress REM sleep so that you dream more. Um, but some, even among the ones that suppress it, make it sort of more active. So. 
often in the drug studies they're only looking at frequency for nightmares and they'll go up with certain drugs even while maybe like beautiful dreams are going up too but but that's so what's not happening the, the drugs are inhibiting REM sleep lots of them are inhibiting REM sleep some are inhibiting the amount of time and yet still activating it some are just suppressing it oh. Uh, lots of the antidepressants uh, suppress REM time. And the result of that is a, a, an increase? Um, the result of many of the drugs is no recall of dreams or less recall of dreams while on the meds and then what we call a REM rebound, more more dreaming sleep should you get off the meds. Oh, okay. Actually, alcohol has somewhat that effect. It It suppresses REM, but more typically for... Normal drinkers, that that just means it's it's a little easier to go to sleep. You go into a sleep stage that that's less REM at first, and then by the end of the night, if you're not extremely intoxicated, you sort of have more REM and more vivid REM, vivid dreams at, right at the end of a night when you've mm. gone to bed with alcohol in your system. But for for very heavy drinkers who basically keep a fair bit of alcohol in their system, even by the time they're waking up, they'll just have suppressed dreaming while they're on the alcohol and then dramatic dreams often nightmares when they're trying to withdraw from alcohol and so what are the implications of that from a biological basis in terms of the brain i mean in terms of we normally think the alcohol obviously causes uh, medical problems like liver mm -hmm. problems cirrhosis but here if alcohol is changing dreaming behavior and therefore sleep it could have other deep psychological issues too Yes, although actually suppressing suppressing stage four, some of the deepest stages of sleep, seems to have more dramatic effects on ill health quicker. It, it seems um, if you're trying to kill an animal, um, which scientists do with rab, lab, rab, lab rats, um, it, to suppress non-REM sleep is actually much mm. more lethal, mm. much quicker. And you get somewhat subtler. Uh, people seem to get somewhat paranoid and and hallucinate while awake a bit more when they're extremely deprived of REM sleep. It it's in other situations it's hard to purely deprive REM sleep because if people just go into it faster and faster as you wake them up. And most of these drugs don't completely Mm. Um, knock it out. They mm. just change the amounts. But we don't have any uh, good information on pure schizophrenia or pure mental disorder without drugs because we just don't have that many studies. Um, be, yeah, because now it's hard to do the without drugs. They're so considered the standard of care. But even back in the older studies where you really did have unmedicated schizophrenics, when someone's floridly psychotic, and they tell you dreams that are different from other people's dreams. If you read through these, it's really hard to tell if they mean a dream from their night's sleep or they're just talking about some thought they had five minutes ago or they're understanding your question about dreams. Um, Is the nature of schizophrenia uh, similar to the delirium of dreams? I think not. Many of my colleagues have written uh, of dreams as a model for mm -hmm. for psychosis. I I think that it's pretty naive to just think that one altered state of consciousness because it's very different from our usual waking state and seems kind of bizarre compared to our usual waking state that that those are alike. And in fact, schizophrenics have many more auditory hallucinations than oh, right. visual hallucinations, right. despite in the movies, they always make it visual just because yes. you can display that. But auditory hallucinations are most of psychotic hallucinations. And there's very little auditory mm -hmm. imagery in dreams at all. So in some ways, I think they're almost pushing consciousness in opposite directions, mm -hmm. just like I think that all very psychoactive drugs are not necessarily mostly like each way. other. Right. They, they can right. be changes from our right. usual state. So I really believe that in terms of, I, I think it's, a, it's an obvious 
but incorrect comparison. But what to we can to. say for sure is that the, when we have normal consciousness and then we vary it in all different ways, whether normal sleep or schizophrenic sleep or schizophrenia awake, that anytime you deviate from normal consciousness, we have some kind of an altered state, mm -hmm. which are uh, real facts about the world that can help us understand what consciousness yes, is. Yes, and they may all have in common just illuminating how much of our experience is what our brain is doing that mm -hmm. that it, there's not one objective reality out there that we're going to experience mm -hmm. no matter what our biochemical mm -hmm. state but that really it's being all reconstructed mm -hmm. in our mind Dr dreams are the most common illustration for every one of that but certainly psychoactive drugs make that point also